All right, we're at week number eight. All right, let's start with prayer. Let's close our eyes, hands together. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for today. I pray that the kids will learn about judges today and especially about the story of Gideon. I pray that the pictures will help them to learn. And uh, thank you for gathering us here, Lord. Um, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, Simon remembers our three words. What was the three year old, Simon? Yes. Listen to the bishop, put your hands up if you want to say something. Very good. You guys remember those? So I want you to sit quietly, pay attention when the bishop's talking. And what if you want to say something? What do you do, Sarah? Good. All right, book number seven in the Bible. As you read through your Bible, you get to book number seven, which is called Judges. And today we're going to learn a little bit about the judge called Gideon. Gideon. Can you guys say that? Gideon. <laughs> Gideon. So we're at the time here before Israel had a king. They had judges that God raised up. And he raised them up to lead Israel, to do judgment in Israel. And we learn about different judges in the book of Judges. But today we're going to particularly look at the judge called Gideon and his story. So Gideon comes at a time when the Israelites were being oppressed by the Midianites because they were doing wicked things in the sight of the Lord, evil things, you know, worshipping false gods. So Gideon, he was hiding when he was threshing the wheat because the Midians, Midianites kept taking it off them. So he was hiding while he was threshing the wheat. And while he was hiding and he was you know, getting the wheat together for his, for his family and for his people, an angel came to him. An angel of the Lord came to him and said to Gideon, you mighty man of valor, the Lord is with you. And Gideon, when the angel said to Gideon, the Lord is with him, he was thinking, how can God be with us when all this evil has come across Israel? You know, we're being oppressed by the Midianites. And the angel said to Gideon, well, this is why God has come to you, because God's going to use you to deliver the people of Israel. So sometimes we complain about things, you know, sometimes we complain about things at home, but the reason why God created you is to fix the problem. So it's the same with Gideon. Gideon was asking, well, what's God going to do about our problems? And the angel says, he has pointed to Gideon, hey, that's why God has sent you. God is going to use Gideon to deliver the people of Israel. Now, Gideon didn't believe the angel straight away. So, to, to make sure that this man that he met was an angel of God, he said, wait a second, I'm going to go prepare a sacrifice for God. So he went and he went and killed an animal. You know, he created a sacrifice for God. And then he put it on the altar. And then the angel with his staff touched the sacrifice on the altar and then God's fire came down and consumed that sacrifice to show that he truly was an angel of the Lord. Right? Now the next thing that God asked him to do because at this time the Israelites they weren't worshipping God they were worshipping a false God right? this false God that they had it's just a statue that they created of Baal so he told Gideon, you know, now that Gideon knew that this was an angel of the Lord and God was going to use Gideon to deliver the people of Israel, he told Gideon, hey, I want you to go and I want you to throw down the altar of Baal. I want you to smash it and break it. But Gideon was always a little bit scared of doing what God asked him to do. So instead of doing it in the daytime, he did it at nighttime. So he took some of his friends... And when at night time he snuck into the altar of Baal and then they threw it down, they broke it and they cut down the groves and then they burned a sacrifice to God rather than to Baal. So what do you think happened in the morning? In the morning when the people saw that their false god was smashed onto the ground, they were like saying, who did this? And they said it was Gideon. So Gideon got, found out that he had done this 
But then his father stood up for him and said, hey, well, if Baal is a real god, why can't Baal defend himself? You know, his altar gets thrown down, but if he's a true god, why can't he defend himself? But he can't, because why? He's a false god. He's not a real god. So this is how God started to use Gideon to deliver the people of Israel out of, you know, worshipping Baal, and that's why they were being oppressed by the Midianites. Now God tells Gideon that he's going to use him to deliver Israel. Gideon still doesn't believe God. You know, he's still scared. So to make sure that God is going to use him to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Midianites, Gideon gets a fleece. It's a piece of wool from a sheep. And he puts it on the ground. And he says to God, God, if you're going to use me to deliver Israel out of the Midianites, in the morning, I want the fleece to be wet, but everywhere else to be dry on the ground. Now, the next day, when Gideon went to look at the fleece, what do you think happened? The fleece was wet, and the ground was all dry. He had to wring the water out of the fleece. But Gideon still wasn't sure. He was still scared. So he said to God, you know, he's like, God, if, if you really are using me this time, so remember the first time it was the fleece was wet and the ground was dry. This time Gideon says, God, if you're really using me to deliver Israel out of the Midianites, this time I want the fleece to be dry and all the ground to be wet. So what do you think happened the next day? That's what happened. God made the fleece dry and the ground wet to show Gideon that God was with him. So this showed Gideon's doubt. So Gideon wasn't a perfect man. You know, he was scared. He doubted God. But that doesn't mean you can't be used. Are you ever scared sometimes? you ever feel scared? You know, well, God can still use you even when you're scared. You know, just like Gideon. Gideon was scared. God could still use him, you know, if he was willing to be used. So what happens? Gideon gets a whole army together, about 30,000 people, to fight against the Midianites. But you know what God says? God says... That's too many people. Because he, he doesn't want the Israelites to think because you have so many people, this is why you won this battle. So you know what he tells Gideon? He tells Gideon to tell all the soldiers that came out to fight, the 32,000 soldiers, he tells them, hey, you tell them, anybody that's scared to fight, tell them to go home. So that's what Gideon says. Gideon says, if anybody is scared to go into battle, you can go home. And guess how many people left? 20,000 people. So how many did we start with? About 30,000. And when he said, wait, 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 if you want to say something, you want to put your hand up? Okay, good. So 1,000 went away? Oh, 10,000 went away. So 10,000 went away. So now we're left with 10,000 people. So two-thirds of the people left because they were scared. And that was okay, because God said, if you're scared, you can go. So now he's down to 10,000 people. But God says, 10,000 is still too many. You know, we're not going to win this battle with 10,000. We're going to win this battle with even less to show that God is the one that won this battle for us. So God makes a test. He says, of the 10,000 men, tell them to drink in the water. And he says, depending on how they drink, I'm going to tell you who you can keep and who you can't keep in the army. He says, the people that drink like this when they go to the water, they kneel down and then they get the water in their hands and they bring it to their face. He's saying, those are the people that you're going to keep in the army. But the people that bow down on their face and drink the water right out of the river, yeah, most of the people did it that way. Right? But a few people drunk like this. Now, I don't know exactly what that represents, but God used this test to show 
You know, maybe it was the people that bowed down. He wanted the people that weren't willing to bow down. Yeah. So, how many people do you think didn't bow down and instead drank like this? How many people do you think? Want to guess? Ten? It was more than ten? It was three hundred. Three hundred. So we went from thirty thousand to ten thousand after the people that scared were left to three hundred. Three hundred people. And God said, that's who I'm going to use to win this battle. And everybody else went home. So what did the 300 soldiers of Gideon do? So Gideon separated them into three companies. So if we have 300, how many in each company? 100 in each company. And we see the Midianites camping over here. So what did the Israelites do? They snuck around and they circled the camp of the Midianites. 300 of them, right? In three companies. And they had pitchers of oil with fire and their horns, their trumpets. Ah, you know where the trumpets is going to come in. So when they stationed themselves around the Midianites, do you know what God told them to do? It says here, Judges chapter 7, verse 18. When I blow with a trumpet, I and all that are with me, then blow ye the trumpets also on every side of all the camp and say, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. So do you remember the story of Joshua? Remember they, they circled and they shouted? Well, this is very similar, wasn't it? They got, went around the Midianites, but instead of going around seven times like in Joshua, they just were all camped around, you know, like standing all around. And then when they broke the pitchers of oil with the flames and they blew the trumpets, what did they say? The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Now what happened this time when they said that? There wasn't any walls to come tumbling down this time. And when they said that, so there they are saying, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And then in the confusion that happened in the camp, do you know what? All the Midianite army did it was about 120, 100 and something thousand of them. They started fighting each other. They fighting each other and killing each other, and they thought they were in a battle, and then they fled. So God, yeah, the Midianites. So God used the 300 men of Israel and their shout, and then God confounded the Midianites. And confused them and they were killing each other and then they left and I believe how many were left after there was like a hundred and thirty five thousand of them a hundred and twenty thousand died just from killing each other <laughs> and then how many were left 15,000 were left so the 300 chased the 15,000 and that was still a miracle 300 people taking on 15,000 people, and they still won the battle. So let's read this verse together. It's today's verse. Judges chapter 7, verse 18. When I blow with a trumpet, I and all that are with me, then blow ye the trumpets also on every side of all the camp, and say, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. All right, let's say that last bit louder. You ready? The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And what happens? Then they got confused, didn't they? And they killed each other. So that's one of the stories of the judges. And, you know, just like in the time of judges, the children of Israel were really wicked. They sinned, but God sent them a saviour, didn't he? Sometimes he would send them Samson, sometimes he would send them Gideon, and there were different judges that we read about all throughout the book of Judges. And what's this a picture of? This is a picture of Jesus. Because today, we sin, don't we? See, we're evil. 
we deserve judgment, but God delivered up a judge, Jesus, a saviour for us. So he's our saviour today, and if we just put our faith in him, if we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we will be delivered from the oppression of the devil, won't we? There you go, I can't really see that. That's the swords. <laughs> so today, so Simon's brought his ram home today, but after, we're going to make one of these. You guys already saw it. Okay, so I'm going to make one for you guys, and Simon, I think you can try and make one yourself. Okay, yeah. So we're going to make a balloon sword. So when we can say, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Okay? All right, so let's stand up. Let's go to the back. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's go to the back. So we have enough time to do this. <laughs>